The amendment that I have to the pending legislation, which will be uh, familiar uh, to my colleagues because it's similar to a bipartisan bill that Senator Menendez of New Jersey and I have introduced, a standalone bill. Uh, it's called the Taiwan Air Power Modernization Act of 2011. It does something very simple, but something very important. It requires the United States to respond to a request by the government of Taiwan uh, to purchase 66 F-16 C and D models of fighter aircraft. Why is this uh, important? Well, it's important for all sorts of reasons, one of which is that, uh, as Robert Kaplan recently pointed out in an op-ed in the September 23rd edition of the Washington Post, he said, by 2020, the United States will not be able to defend Taiwan from a Chinese air attack. A 2009 RAND study found that even with American F-22s, two carrier strike groups in the region and continued access to the Kadena Air Base in Okinawa, that the U.S. will not be able to defend Taiwan. So it's very important that we sell Taiwan at no taxpayer expense. It's cash money coming from the uh, Taiwanese government to the United States that happens to sustain about 2,300 jobs right here in America, that we sell them these F-16 so they can defend themselves. Dan Blumenthal, in an <clears throat> October the 3rd, 2011 article published by the American Enterprise Institute, lists what he calls the top 10 unicorns of China policy. He says in the article, a unicorn is a beautiful make-believe creature, but despite overwhelming evidence of its fantastical nature, many people still believe in them. As he lists the unicorn, top 10 unicorns of U.S.-China policy, the number two unicorn relates to um, the subject of this amendment, and it's entitled, Ab Abandoning Taiwan Will Remove the Biggest Obstacle to Sino-American relations. In other words, rather than antagonize China, Communist China, by selling 66 F-16 C and D models to Taiwan, some might suggest we should withhold and not make that sale, as the Obama administration has apparently at least decided to do for now, uh, because we don't want to antagonize China. Because if we antagonize China, uh, they're going to be, uh, our relationships will deteriorate. But, as Mr. Blumenthal points out, rather than bask in the recent warming of its relationship with Taiwan, China has picked fights with Vietnam, the Philippines, Japan, South Korea, and India. He goes on to say it doesn't matter what obstacles the United States removes, China's foreign policy has its own internal logic that it's hard for the United States to shape. Abandoning Taiwan for the sake of better relations is yet another dangerous fantasy. As my colleagues may recall, I introduced this amendment earlier uh, on the trade assistance, uh, trade assistance adjustment assistance provisions, the TAA, and the uh, distinguished chairman of the Senate Finance Committee uh, from Montana quoted Ecclesiastes to make the point that uh, it wasn't the right time. He said to every for everything there is a season. Well, he also indicated that uh, my amendment might at that time derail the carefully negotiated bipartisan agreement on trade assistance. I didn't agree with him at that time because my amendment was related to trade because these F-16s represent an export for the United States economy that creates jobs right here at home in addition to its importance for other reasons. But now the reason for that objection no longer exists. The pending legislation is not a carefully negotiated bipartisan agreement. And I hope my colleagues who shared my concerns or shared the concerns that the chairman of the Finance Committee argued earlier will find it uh, an opportunity to support this amendment on the merits today because I think it's very important. The chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee argued at the time against my amendment on the TAA bill. He said it was unprecedented uh, for the Congress to force 
the White House's hand when it comes to foreign military sales. Uh, well, the fact of the matter is, I would remind my colleagues that the Taiwan Relations Act that passed and was signed into law in 1979 makes it clear that Congress has a very important role to play. The Taiwan Relations Act says the President and the Congress shall determine the nature and quantity of such defensive articles and services based solely upon their judgment of the needs of Taiwan. So this is the law of the land, and unfortunately, I don't believe the administration's policy when it comes to selling uh, defensive weaponry to Taiwan, that their agreement that we should just upgrade the um, existing fleet of F-16s is adequate to meet the demands of uh, of the Taiwan Relations Act. This uh, chart, taken from uh, Defense Intelligence Agency materials, public materials, shows the incredible shrinking Taiwan Air Force. Taiwan's projected fighter fleet over time goes from roughly 400 as part of a total of 490 combat aircraft, but the F-5 is an obsolete American aircraft, as you can see, uh, basically uh, because of uh, uh, repairs and uh, needed repairs, replacement parts, and the other is basically not dependable anymore. The French Mirage 2000, it's estimated, will basically drop off the chart shortly after 2015 or so. And then we see the F-16 A and B models, which uh, the administration says we should upgrade, will be roughly 150 of those will be basically the remaining Taiwan Air Force, down from a total of roughly 400 fighters. And actually, the administration's proposed upgrade will essentially take some of these F-16s offline, a whole squadron of F-16As and Bs, out of service during the retrofit period, further diminishing the number of available aircraft for Taiwan to defend itself. The Taiwan Relations Act was a response to a decision by the executive branch of the federal government that Congress happened to disagree with. One of the great things about our form of government is that uh, Congress can disagree with the administration and force the administration's hand when, con when it's Congress believes it's appropriate to do so. And uh, the Taiwan Relations Act was one example of that. That decision was based on President Carter's diplomatic recognition of the People's Republic of China and breaking diplomatic relations with Taiwan. Congress had a different view and wanted to make sure that the freedom of the Taiwanese people was secure. And so we passed bipartisan legislation, which was ultimately signed into law by President Carter. But the great thing about the Taiwan Relations Act and the United States relationship with Taiwan is it's always enjoyed strong bipartisan support. This is not a partisan issue at all. Here's what former Senator Jesse Helms said about it 20 years after the passage of the Taiwan Relations Act. He said, now it's a bit of a rarity when an issue comes up that brings Jesse Helms and Ted Kennedy together. I never served with uh, Senator Helms. I did serve with Senator Kennedy, and I can assure you from what I know of Senator Helms and his record, that was an understatement. But he said this was precisely such an issue, the Taiwan Relations Act. Senator Kennedy, Senator Goldwater, and I, along with Congressman Wolf, Derwinski, and others, set out to ensure that after having their treaty of alliance tossed in the trash can, our friends in Taiwan would be left with far more than the vague verbal promises the Carter administration was offering for Taiwan. So we went to work, and the result was the Taiwan Relations Act. I believe, Madam President, that my amendment is a natural extension, or actually a fulfillment, of the Taiwan Relations Act and a reaffirmation of the bipartisan leadership that the Senate has brought, which would originally brought Senator Kennedy and Senator Helms together way back in 1979. And we should not depart from that strong bipartisan tradition of supporting our ally in Taiwan and providing the defensive weaponry they need in order to defend themselves. So the United States will not have to fill that gap. 
During the uh, debates on the Trade Assistance Authority bill that uh, Senator Kerry, the, the distinguished chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, argued that President Ma of Taiwan is happy with the administration's decision merely to upgrade the existing F-16 A and B models and not to replace the F-5s and the Mirages and other aircraft that are fast becoming obsolete. The senator from Massachusetts went so far as to say at the time that the president of Taiwan has said the approved package is entirely adequate. He feels they will have the defensive capacity necessary under the Taiwan Relations Act in order to be able to defend themselves at the current level of the upgrade we are providing. The facts are, Mr. President, the government of Taiwan needs both the existing F-16 A and B models plus and upgraded through this upgrade, but also the 66 additional F-16 aircraft that are the subject of my amendment. To quote the Taiwan, Taiwan's foreign minister, he said, our government will continue to work closely with the United States to strengthen our national defense and security by urging the United States to continue its arms sales to Taiwan with needed articles and systems for our defensive capabilities, including F-16 C and D aircraft and diesel electric submarines. Well, just to remind my colleagues again, this is a familiar chart from the last time I offered this amendment, which shows the growing imbalance of the Taiwan Strait, with China with some 2,300 operational combat aircraft and Taiwan with 490 operational combat aircraft, including 400 fighters as part of those combat aircraft. But the fact of the matter we know is that China doesn't tell the truth when it comes to its defensive and national security expenditures. It discloses only a fraction of what it spends as it projects power across the world to follow its uh, economic needs and interests. Let me quote the uh, Taiwan's defensive, uh, defense minister. I earlier quoted their, uh, another Taiwanese official, but the Taiwan's defense minister said the F-16 A and B fleet upgrade package and the F-16 C and D fighter purchase have different needs and purposes. It's not contradictory to have both cases done. Last Friday, September the 30th, a member of the Senate, or excuse me, the House Armed Services Committee, who happens to be of the other party, met with President Ma in Taiwan. According to the official press release by the government of Taiwan, President Ma commented that the upgrades of the F-16 A and B series aircraft are aimed at extending the life of fighter jets, of the fighter jets, and avoiding a lack of spare parts due to the age of the F-16 A and B series. Meanwhile, Taiwan wishes to purchase F-16 C and D fighter jets to replace its aging fleet of F-5E fighter jets. That's the, uh, in red here, the aging F-5E fighter jets. Therefore, President Ma explained, the objectives of the two are entirely different. Well, Mr. President, let me just leave with one final comment. Several of my colleagues have argued that the Obama administration could later approve the sale of these F-16s, C and D series, at a later date. But that's actually not the case. The F-16 production line was recently, was recently received a small order from the Air Force of Iraq to sell Iraq F-16s. But without, without additional orders, the production line will soon be shutting down. The people who are working there will be uh, laid off or reassigned to other jobs. So we're rapidly approaching a point at which the President of the United States will not be able to approve the sale of new F-16s because they will not be able to be manufactured because the production line will be shut down. And I hope my colleagues will keep this in mind as they consider my amendment. But even if the production line was not an issue, why should we make our allies in Taiwan wait? Why would the United States tell our friends to come back later? Well, as I said, uh, the chairman of the Finance Committee quoted Ecclesiastes during our last debate, but allow me to conclude with some wise words from Proverbs. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due. 
when it is in your power to act. Do not say to your neighbor, come back tomorrow and I'll give it to you when you already have it with you. To that, I hope my colleagues would uh, give a hearty amen, Mr. President, and I yield the floor and suggest the absence of quorum. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Akaka.